Our next case for the session is 72 year old woman having history of hypertension, diabetes, presented with recent anterior wall MI, having a class 3 post MI angina and severe LV dysfunction. Angiogram was showing 95% uh, lesion in the proximal LAD. Our plan is to do robotic assisted PCI into the LAD. Arocritical view. Dr. Sanjay, you are on. Yes, take suit. Uh, yes. Sanjay, before you start the uh, case here, and, um, and I'm definitely supportive of new technology and seeing where this will take us, but could you perhaps uh, just tell the audience, if you were not using this, how long would this case take you to do, if you were doing this uh, manually? Manually also it will take 10 minutes. So 10 minutes? Yes. Because in the, uh, the, the recent uh, published uh, trial on this, uh, you know, with more uh, complex uh, procedures, yeah, that was the only difference, wasn't it? Uh, that they just took a little longer. Uh, fluoro time was about the same. Um, outcome and complications were the same, but it just takes you a little bit longer, doesn't it? Yes, yes, that is true. Sanjay, are you all set? Go to AP Cordal. See, that is what I want to tell young guys. I want to enter the LAD, that's why. RAO Cordal. Go to RAO Cordal. Enable all. Okay. I am using the wire scout. Just go to RAO Cordal. I am in LED now. Sanjay, you can take the best view now. I am in LED. Okay. You have also lo loaded the stand? So, Tejas, um, one thing which we were discussing at lunchtime, so we, we, we were using this uh, first version, mm -hmm. so, you know, without the extra uh, toggle here for the guide. Mm -hmm. But one thing which we did notice that there is a little bit of delay as you're moving the wire. That's right. Uh, are you experiencing the same with this uh, current version? Uh, you know, uh, if it is a straight segment, the wire follows, you know, the, the movement of the no. But if it is a tortuous segment, then we have some other tricks to, to, to go in. Rotate only on one side, you know, I just go on rotating on one side and it moves properly. Something yeah. like that. Because there always seemed to be in the, uh, the, the first version that we were using a little bit of a delay and then you keep moving it and then it's got some memory and it keeps, <laughs> keeps going. Yeah. Which could be a problem with some more complex uh, that's right, that's disease. Right. Scout. It's going in diag. Now, you see, I just go on rotating on one side and it moves now. So, scar again in diagonal. So, I am coming back, rotating only on one side, should go now. Scout, again diagonal, coming back. I think it's important to emphasize you do not get any physical uh, feedback about any resistance uh, to the wire, only, only, uh, only visual. Yeah, visual, visual, that's right. Scout. Which diet. is what we as attendings, when our fellows, this is what we have to rely on because we can't feel the wire. That's right. But we right. can usually tell that there's something going wrong that's because right. of the way the wire is that's behaving. Right. That's right. And I rely very heavily you know, when I want to go through a complex segment, we are doing lot of some complex stuff with Robo. In that case, I rely very heavily on my balloon. Yeah. So, it, so it may be then that uh, we overemphasize the, uh, the, the, that physical feedback of the, uh, the wire. Yeah. At the, which is the stand you have taken, Sanjay? 3.5 point expedition, fine. So this is going to be a direct stand? Direct stand. This is a turbo. It goes very fast. Now I am slow. And there I am. Scout. Scout. 
ओके गो अप ट्वेल्व फोर्टीन फिफ्टीन इट लुक्स गुड कम डाउन अच्छा इज अदर पेशेंट रेडी देर ओके so i think it's worth pointing out that it's an obvious thing here but you and i are the only people not wearing lead here yeah. and there's 15 <laughs> people in the room and everyone's wearing lead <laughs> that's right <laughs> go up what's one say more moment including teja behind here he, he's getting lots of protection teja still uh, wants to continue you know uh, what should i say teja with your re reproductive thing like thing <laughs> but but he has a fashion statement this is a very special uh yeah, lead apron yeah, yeah he's very fashion conscious see malcolm looks great done so mind you we have kept Rel reg relatively regular cases for robo not because we are not able to do complicated stuff up to an extent we are able to do a good amount of complicated stuff but i don't want the audience to get away with the impression that you can do everything with robo uh, no this is a new technology which is going to stay it is going to take some time it is in the evol evolution phase and yeah if the technology develops then it is going to be great not only for the patient but also for the cardiologist and the para, uh, and the staff working in the cath lab everybody so uh, uh, the, that is that is the main message i was supposed to give you can go to epicranial i i think that that's a good point so there j just on the, uh, the the technical aspects of just putting the stents in two schools of thought routine post dilation versus no routine yeah. tell tell us your thoughts and maybe tejan can tell us for uh, yes. for the apparently soft lesion in the uh, on eyeballing and then the inflation of the stent like this type of case in direct stenting if it inflates so well then we can presume that you have you know stuck the struts very well to the endothelium otherwise we have some clue you know uh, uh, while you are inflating in that case i will i will chase that lesion with post dilatation so we have uh, per yeah yeah so uh, we, i mean it's a, it's a it's a great looking result here and it, it looks as though we're finished yeah but um, but we have AP, professor akasar in the audience yeah so i would like to hear yeah. whether he is someone who would now, now routinely I, oct th this that's right. and then decide whether he's going to post it i want to show them it. how i remove the guide catheter we we'll do that first yeah i am pulling the knob back and rotating it counter clockwise you can safely remove it without otherwise you know you just pull it it has a tendency to go in so you pull and rotate it counter clockwise yeah 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 you know the, the, the The, the shame with this system though is that you've got a very expensive cassette there yeah. and now gets just dropped <laughs> in the rubbish bin that's right <laughs> so they just uh, when would you start uh, yeah thinking so about myself dr pinto nada whether you can there is a sir myself dr yeah it's a difficult question you, i'm sure you yeah. must have thought yeah. about it or yeah. already yeah. might have tried it well, we have tried it but uh, you know this is too new a technology uh, to do much experimentation at this point of time but uh, surely we have tried and we have tried successfully but i will not recommend that i will not recommend that there is sir my sir doctor another question for you tej just so this morning uh, Rajiv Kalari gave a, a nice little summary of uh, what needs the next step here ultimately you know th this is going to help us yeah you know it keeps us away from radiation keeps us away from wearing a lead aprons for uh, protective gear for prolonged periods of time but ultimately 
the insurers, the hospitals will want to see that this is going to benefit uh, patients. That's right. And that's going to be the big challenge, and that's pretty much all they're going to be interested in. But you are very quick with very succinct philosophical comments, <laughs> and, I, and I wanted to hear what you had to say about that. So, so when it comes to trying to prove that this is going to have clinical benefit, and if it doesn't, then where does the technology go? Then, it, then, then, then uh, you know, the technology will have a bad future. They will have to work, you know, in research and development to make sure that it, it of course, it increases the precision and accuracy, but that has to be transformed to the end user who have less experience. And they should, once they start feeling that yes, accuracy and precision is very high, and I am very, uh, the guy who has done 100 plus this, after uh, completing the fellowship, if he takes the, you know these knobs in hand, and if he feels that fine, it is as good as working with the hand, then we are done. There are technologies which are great technologies like rota rotational atherectomy, excellent technology. Success rate from 99 it takes to 99.9. Tejan, you will also agree. Now, rotational atherectomy, I would consider a great technology. But I will not consider a versatile technology because it is a difficult uh, device to use for many. Just small change by creating over the wire system, from creating, uh, by creating a, a rapid exchange from over the wire in rotational atherectomy can change the scenario. I don't know why Boston Scientific is not doing that. What is your comment, Malcolm? No, before, before actually we talk about it, I was just going to respond to Malcolm's uh, question that with artificial intelligence and robotic use actually this robot will interact with you as you work and ultimately with intelligence uh, robot will get that what they just will do when they run in trouble. So yes. as, you, as you go back and forth, back and forth, machine will figure out your technique. So robot will become probably for good operator that this is what Tejas will do, this is what Rajiv will do, this is what Malcolm will do and then you can program that type of intelligence in the computer <laughs> and then uh, outcome could be different. Time will tell. So I would disagree with two things. First of all, you would not want to transfer my intelligence into the system because it would be a failure. <laughs> Secondly, uh, I don't think I will be doing this because by the time this uh, gets really developed, I, I will be retired. So, but in response to your question, Tejas, I, I think the first thing is that, uh, and it's been brought up a couple of times today, that the equipment we use, it's got to be simple to use. Yes. And, and it cannot be complex, because if it's very complex, it scares people away. That's right. And they won't use it, and you won't take advantage of, of what it can uh, do. Or you uh, don't use it properly and you yes, end up having complications and you don't know uh, how to get out of that. The second thing though is just looking in, in the future and, and again uh, this is very futuristic. I think that in the future we will be able to map out the coronary anatomy with three-dimensional CT or MR in an iteration that's much more advanced than what we have yes. today artificial intelligence, when the patient comes to the cath lab, they're not coming for a diagnostic angiogram. We have all the anatomy. We have all of the measurements and the directions and it's programmed into a system like this or something similar. That, oh, sorry, something different to this, but uh, with the same goal in mind that it's a robotic uh, procedure. At the moment, I think it's important for everyone to understand that this is robotic assistance. This is not the robot that you see on a car assembly that, line at Toyota that, right. where you hit the start button and sit back and everything is yes, done. Yes, yes. But wouldn't that be fabulous that all you do is strap on a little probe over the radial artery, you hit start, and the robot does everything from access to, uh, to the whole procedure and all you have to do is ready to hit the stop button. And anyone who disbelieves that is ignoring the fact that it's... that. First of all, that they are too old, because that's what's going to happen. This will be solved sort of actuarially. That is a favorite expression of mine. And, but uh, I think that we see driverless cars. Yes. 
and there is no doubt that the technology and the science it's there and we have not applied it to medicine uh, yet and you talked about the da Vinci uh, robot right. in uh, surgery it, it's used increasingly but you know does it improve patient outcomes we still don't know but these are still early iterations and I think that there's going to be some really exciting things to see in the future and so I think that it's up to us to try to help develop these uh, tools but understand that at the moment we can't prove that it's uh, doing our patients better but maybe in the future it will. I agree. Like not only, you know, if you leave the whole thing to the scientists developing and you know, innovating robo, it will be a failure. It is going to be a combined work with one-to-one -one interaction between the end users and scientists. That is the clinicians and the scientists. If you want to make a robo which is a very, very user-friendly robo for everybody and you have to, uh, you make a robo which has effect on the endpoints and the outcome. You know, we, we, I just mentioned you're talking about driverless cars or you know, autonomous uh, vehicles. And there's a lot of people who have, uh, you know, very skeptical about it. But you know that it's going to happen. Yes. It will happen. And our, our children and our grandchildren probably won't be driving cars. Absolutely. And, uh, and the same thing is going to happen in medicine. I am looking forward to having, you know, to seeing that day before I retire. For sure. <laughs> and even before you retire. 